In this video, I will show you the 14 most important points you need to know about Blender when you have to do with 3D printing and STL files that you download from a site. One of the possible sites where you can download such STL files is, for example, this site here. And as an example, not necessarily as the best example, but good as an example, we have this hammer here with stand that can be 3D printed. And with this, we will take a look on how we can change it with Blender so that it's easier to 3D print. So the first is I'm downloading the model into a folder and then it looks like this, this zip file. And if I unpack it, I get this and this file, also these two files. I have also saved always a copy of the link where the file comes from in the same folder. So this is the just the link file. And with this, we will go into Blender now. So Blender is here. I will initialize my um, add-on, which you can get at the Blender market, but you don't need it for this, what we are doing here. This is just for me to make things a bit easier. So I delete the default cube, just click on it with the left mouse button and press the delete button. So then we have just Blender, the lights and the camera. And now the first thing on our list is import, export STL files. So I want to import the STL file from this model. So I will copy the path into the clipboard using Control C. And then I go to File and I go to Import. And I choose STL. I will let it for a moment so you can see it exactly. Import STL. Then I click the left mouse button and I get this window. And here at the top, I mark the text. I press paste. So I do paste. Paste from clipboard. Doesn't give me a paste. Okay, so I mark it and I press string and V. And so I paste it and I press enter. So I'm now in the folder um, where I have the STL file. Now I check, I don't need to press anything here. I will just load it. Double click it and load it. So now I have loaded it and you see that here in the top right corner, but you can't see it nowhere. The point is you will also see here we have the dimensions and this is really large, 840 meters by 1100 meters by 458 meters. So now we have loaded the hammer, but the hammer is very large. We see it here, 840 by 1100 meters. So we won't get it down to a normal size. And for this, I will click on scale and move the mouse with the left mouse button pressed downward. So that all three fields are black. Then I press 0 0.01. And then what we see is, that here we have 8.14, 11, and 4.58. <coughs> and then we must do two more things at this place. And the first thing is we go here for object. And we say set origin to geometry.
And the second thing is we go here on apply scale. So, and if I press now the this button, then you will see this marker where the hammer is. And this will help you in case, for example, the hammer would be very small and you cannot see it, or it would be somewhere out of the view, which can happen after loading. Then you can look for this symbol and this is where the hammer is. Now moving inside Blender is something you should learn in another video because generally you will just press the middle mouse button then you can rotate and together with shift middle mouse button you can move and then you can rotate the mouse wheel to zoom into the object. So it's not difficult, it's just these three things. And now we see the hammer here. <laughs> but the point is what we see here and what we see here Both objects are now just one object. So we want two objects. So we want not print them together. We want to print them in two parts. One time the stand, maybe in another material, and one time the hammer. So we have to split them. So um, again, if I use the add-on, um, I think there is an easier button for splitting objects. If I find it, there's one button where I can just split the objects. I think it's here. So here, um, break by, by uh, part. So I would just press the right mouse button and it would split the object. But regularly in Blender, if you don't have the add-on, you will go to the edit mode here, also here in the edit mode, left mouse button, and then you press um, the P button, P, P, like point. Then you get this menu, and this is exactly the same like the button, which says by material or by parts, and um, you choose by loose parts. So he will now break the hammer in its in its parts. So I press break it by loose parts. And now you see we have now here a lot of parts. We have broken the hammer into its parts. Now it's time to leave the edit mode for now so that we are back in object mode. And if I now click the hammer, only the hammer is orange. And if I click the stand, only the stand is orange. So what I do now first, I will save this as a blend file. And this is our number two after import export STL files. We have load and save a blend file. I can now go here under files and save as and of course I will go to the same folder and I will give it a name this is all together and save it. So now in the folder you can see that here we have now a blend file which is the current situation and this means we can go back to this situation. And to make sure we don't overwrite it, I will save it again as next step. Next step, punkt blend. So this is the next step. So what we can do now is um, we can make all this stuff in a collection. And for this,
I will go here in the outliner. I will click on the most upper object. Then I will press the shift button and click on the most lower object. So this way I have marked everything. Alternatively, I could also choose here the arrow and mark everything and you see it's the same just that we also got the light and the light should not get into our collection so I will press control uh, and unmark the light. So this is all and now I go with the right mouse button here on the hammer and I make move to collection. This means we are putting the, the, all the hammer and all the stuff into a group together and then I say new collection and I call the collection hammer A. So the reason is simple because I can now duplicate collection here. I can make duplicate collection and this I can say is hammer B and hammer B we will just keep as reserve. This means I will make it invisible by pressing on this eye here. And I will also press this camera. Or I can possibly simply press this. And now the hammer B is just invisible. It will not disturb us, but we have a copy in case we destroy something. So now I want to save the STL parts. Now we have split the objects, but we see one important thing again. Um, if I press here, then the, the arrow is here while the object that I pressed ha have pressed is here. So the, the, the origin is not at the right place. So the first thing we need to do is we correct this. So I press this part. I call this the stand and we go to object, set origin, origin do geometry. So now I can press Control S and save this. So the next is the hammer. We also do this, set origin, origin to geometry because this is the right place. And now what I do is I move the hammer to zero, 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 and I can do this. Uh, first I double click here on the text and I call it hammer. Just double click it and then you can give it a new name. And then I go here. Again, I press the left mouse button, I keep the mouse pressed and go a little bit down so that all three fields are black and then I enter zero and this way we move the hammer to the position zero, zero, zero. Let me see, we did not export it yet, but now we can do that. Now, the first thing we can do is, um, what, what I must do now is, um, object, apply all transformations. So and then I can do file, export uh, again, file, export and STL. Alternatively, you can also export as wavefront objects. They can also be loaded by the slicer normally. So, but I'm using the STL. And this thing is just the hammer. 
And here is important, you need to press the select selection only button because here we only want to export the hammer. And then export STL. What you can also do is you can press plus here and then the folder will be added to the bookmarks folder. You can move it up here for example. Yeah, so faster like this and then you can easier access it. So export STL and now what we see is in the folder here we have now the hammer as an STL which we can now put into the slicer for printing. We'll do the same with the stand. So but first I will make the hammer invisible so that it's out of the way. Now I will move the stand to zero and let's check if the um, if it's really the origin to geometry yeah it is okay then I can export it uh, export STL and this is the stand. Note that we already checked this button selection only so I do not need to do it every time I export something. So this is the stand. I make it just invisible and now here are three more parts. This is the I call it top and also I need to do um, set origin to geometry and move it to zero. Zero. So and then I can export it as STL. I call this top. And I can make it invisible. So and then we have these two coins left. We have here a coin and here a coin, but again the origin is somewhere else. So the first step is set origin to geometry or in this case set geometry to origin. So and then I will move it to zero. And then I can export as STL. Mm as wavefront no not as wavefront right now file export as stl and this thing is coin a export and i call it coin a make it invisible and then we have this small coin left and it's the same procedure, set origin to geometry, move it to zero, export as STL, and this is coin B. And now we have exported coin B but not here here so now I can make things visible again and now we have exported all the stuff um, now let's see what is on our list. So set origin to geometry is important. Let's take a small look on rotate objects. Uh, move and resize objects because you need to know that also. So you have seen already if you enter a scale here and press enter 
you will uh, change the dimensions of the object so you will resize it. There is another way. If you press this button here, scale, and then you take the white arrow, you can also resize the object. Pressing escape will go out of this. Also you have here um, this let's first show the move. I will take this. This is moving the object. Now if I press an arrow I can move the object along of this axis. So now we can take a look on the resizing again. You also have this green, blue and red and here you see the explanation for it. Green, blue and red. If I press here you can see different views of the hammer. So if I for example only pull the red you can see the hammer gets a bit distorted as it will only resize to a certain direction unless I take the white. The white um, makes it to all directions. So I will just undo this. <coughs> so and save it one more so that we have this stand also. So this is resized and we have also rotate. This is this symbol here. Using rotate you can rotate the hammer in several ways. Besides that you can also press numbers on the numpad. This will not rotate the hammer but let you see the, the hammer from different positions. So this is rotate, move and resize. Note that if you use scale it's important that you later make object apply scale or apply all transformations so that you have a scale of 1 at the end again. Now we had split object into parts. Now we already did that, how to delete unwanted objects. Now think I don't want a stand, I just don't want it in my file. So what do I do? I um, select the stand and then I press the delete key and it's gone. I will take it back with Control Z like Zeppelin. Alternatively you can press the right mouse button and you will also find delete here and it will also delete an object so delete unwanted object. <coughs> Now we do one more thing. You will do a duplicate if you want to duplicate an object. Mark the object with the left mouse button, press the right mouse button and then you have two choices. Duplicate object and duplicate linked. Normally you will just take duplicate object. And then you have a second object which you can put everywhere. Unlike unless you press escape then it will just stay here and you can move it along the axis. <coughs> now the new object you can do a lot of things with it for example and um, this is this is all what we do into Blender and now let's see what happens if we import the whole stuff into the slicer. So the Bamboo Lab Slicer is starting up. So here is it. New project, noise project. Then I have the empty plate here. And now I need the folder. And now you can print things piece by piece. So let's see the hammer first. 
So the hammer. Now we made it really small, and it's really small now. Now the important point is that we resize all the stuff with the same scale. So um, for this, um, you go on uh, this, uh, skalieren, and then we say 400 percent is not enough. Uh, 1, 2, 3, we make 1000 percent. Is a small hammer, so we take 2000 percent. So this is a big hammer. So, and the next thing is we need to put it on the plate. You see, it's a little bit not perfect for printing. So we use this option here. Now we can tell him how we want to print it. I suggest we can do this. So if it's not too large for the printer, this is an alternative because of the amount of supports we get. And um, because if we put it on the side like this, the printer needs to make a lot of supports here at this side. And if we print it upside, this here only have a bit support here down and not much support here on this side. So then I can press this button and move it around a bit and also rotate it maybe a little bit here it uses less space and then we get the stand so at this place i say no because i want to scale it personally so how much did we take 2000 Was it 2000? Yeah, 2000. So 2000. And then the stand is um, also in the right size. Again, we put it on the plate using this function here. <coughs> so we can use it like this or even scale it a bit more. But first I will rotate it also a bit. So, um, now <clears throat> there is one other thing I would like to show you, and for this I will add another filament, give this maybe another color, let's say we have this in silver, and we want this in golden. So, sort of. Now, let's say we want the hammer um, to have this here in golden. How can we do that? Um, okay, I will move it a bit. I will put it on this plate. So, now it will work. So, now I will go into the painting. Now you only see the hammer. I will just rotate it a bit so this is simply straight so and now I use this tool here first thing is I move this a bit to the right yeah that's okay okay and now I can even make it larger choose this color say okay no larger maximum so now I can make this part here in the other material. See that? Oh no, this is not yet. Uh, we did not get it on the side down here. Let's see, still not. So we got it. So you see, now we have these two parts in gold and the rest is in silver. Now it depends how you print it out. 
if you print it out in this position, you will get a lot of supports here on this side, but then you have only one, two color changes. So you save a lot of filament for this, but you need more filament for the supports here. And now this is the question, how you will do it. Now press the escape button and I go get back to the hammer. Looks like this now. And um, let's see what else we need. The top.stl. I press no again and scale it manually by uh, 2000. Here is it. And now the question is, yeah, so if you print it all together, um, yeah, this is, this is the question. Normally you would print the hammer alone because then you will only have one color switch. Otherwise the printer will lose a lot of filament with the color switching. So you would not print this together if you use multiple colors for one of the objects. This is just the thing to think about. Otherwise, if you say, oh, filament is not important for me, then we can just another color. Select the object here. Go to select the object, go to painting. And um, What's this? Gap fill here, ausfüllen. Choose this. Ah, yeah, funny. Now you can fill the... No, I want the red color. You can fill these patterns here. It's another color. <coughs> And this possibly also. Yeah, it works. So... Hmm. And what else do we have? The two coins, coin one, no. All the stuff must be scaled by the same size. And um, the coin, of course, must be placed on the floor with this side with the side so that the hammer is watching up here. <coughs> And then we have the coin selected. We can again go to fill and color this stuff in other color. So at this place we only get one. Ah, uh, that not. No, this not. This. This, no. Here we can use another system. If I can rotate it like this, then I can again use this tool and say, okay, make it a big larger. And you see, we have all together painted orange. If I make it a bit larger. So, looks like this. Depends on how much orange you want here. Oh, that was too much. We can correct it. I just choose the gray color and say I want to have all this gray. And now we have this orange and this gray. So this direction is also possible. Um, while we have then more color changes. So I will remove this again. Rather take the orange here 
and color the top orange like this. So this is the coin. So the coin, this is the other way to paint things. And then we have not the coin B. No. And resize it. Two thousand. So move it somewhere this away. And this we need to place on the floor. So there is no graphic on this coin, so it can just be somewhere on the floor. So these are all the parts. And this is the main thing you need to know when, when using Blender together with dry 3D printing. Because it's not really difficult to use Blender. And you see it's just a little bit and you can do nearly everything. Let me for the end of the video show you just one more thing that you can do with Blender. Also, you will never print it like this on the bamboo printer because this will make too many color <laughs> color switches. So I can save it anyway. Um, here. Save it anyway. All parts and then simply delete those parts that you are not going to print. So we can do a quick slice just to see what he will do. Coin A is too near so this coin needs to go somewhere else. Slice again. So while he is slicing, there is one more thing. Oh, he's ready. What you see is we have a lot of supports here. Uh, together it's 508 grams. And this coin must also be removed. So that's the difference if we put the hammer in the other direction. So if we go here and we place the hammer on this side, we, we will possibly use much less um, filament. But we will have a lot of color changes because we do a color change in every line because we have painted these parts in golden and then we got a lot of color changes. So let's see what the calculation brings. Um, now the last thing I wanted to show you is, oh, let's look for her, 506. No big difference, strangely enough. <laughs> doesn't see a big difference. Even through I see less supports, he doesn't see a lot difference. So possibly because of the color changes here. So anyway, I will um, do this away and let's take a quick look into Blender to show you some small addition what you can do. And um, let's say you don't want to print the stick and the hammer together. So uh, you print, want to print the hammer and the stick extra. In this case you will need to make new object and delete the stick and delete the hammer. So the first thing what we do is I need to rotate it a little bit. Item. So for this he should be 
great. So what we are doing now is I will make a copy, duplicate object. We did that before and I will put the other object here. So now I will go to into edit mode here object, edit mode. And um, the important point is now that you go to wireframe here, wireframe. Otherwise it will not work. So choose wireframe. Now you can select all of the stick. Oh, here just checking. I got everything. <coughs> not yet. I should. Okay, doesn't matter. And now I press the delete key. Delete vertices or faces and the stick is gone. Okay. I go out again. Now I rotate it a bit more. Ah, oh, this was good. I go to edit mode again and I delete the rest. Delete vertices. So it's gone. So now what I have here, I go to object mode again. I press this button. What I have here is now the hammer, the part with a hole here without the stick. So then I can print only this part, but now I also need to print the stick without the hammer. So what I need to do here is just the opposite. Going to here, wireframe mode. Wireframe mode is important. Don't forget it, otherwise it will not work. And for uh, select everything here. More. Pressing the shift key, you can add to the selection. So I have everything and then I press the delete key and here now I press go to uh, switch between object and edit mode. Now I'm back in object mode and this means I can also go to this. Now what you see is we have now here the I say wood and we have here the hammer part. So now you can export these also um, as STL, export, STL, hammer part, note that selection only is checked and you can also export this one. Export STL wood part. So, so this is the last part. Uh, maybe a little bit advanced. So, and later you will print each of these separately and then glue them together to get the full hammer. This way you can print a hammer in another material. And you, however you make it, you will not have so many color changes, but it's up to you. So this was the video. See you with the next video.